do your characters feel weak? Do you feel like you should be dealing more damage than you are? Do you feel like other players in the game that you've PvP'd against or fought against or maybe seen on the video or stream are dealing way more damage than you? Well, good news is that you can fix it. I myself ran into the same issues and in today's video, we're going to talk about three mistakes that I made starting out in this game that if I could go back in time and fix these mistakes, it would have made my progression a heck of a lot smoother and then it would have made it a lot easier for me to PvP and of course, clear PvE content. See, I, like you, probably got stuck a few times in PvE stages, getting stuck in chapters, getting stuck in tower floors, because I didn't really understand some key things that really needed to be done when playing Crossing Void. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, this first one is gonna sound kind of funny, but this is something that I really did not do at all. And the reason I didn't do this is because I didn't think that I would need to because I, I'd assumed that I would get better gear faster and I assumed that the gear in the beginning was pretty much trash. So this mistake is forgetting to plus my gear. And this was one of the biggest detrimental mistakes that once I realized this, I started to plus my gear because the way that this gear system works is kind of different than other Gashi games that I've played. So when you look at this, let's say you have a blue piece of gear. When you look at a blue piece of gear, the blue piece of gear will only max at level 8. So you can only level this piece of equipment to level 8. Same thing with the green equipment. Green equipment can only go to level 4. So what I didn't realize was that since it was so cheap and since it had such a low threshold, I could have just maxed this gear out immediately. And then once I realized that I maxed this gear out immediately, I started to see that the damage that I was dealing started to go up pretty significant and my survivability started to increase. Now, as we go through these three things, I'm going to go from least to most important so we can build on each of these so you guys can kind of go through this in checklist format. Now, a big question that a lot of players have for me that, you know, when we do these live streams and we be having a ton of fun, you know, doing live PvP and stuff is, yo, D, how do I get to, you know, level eight equipment? How do I get to level 12 equipment? And I want to answer that question first real quick before we move on to the second thing. So outside of me not placing my gear, finding the gear also was a challenge for me as well, although this is not included in the list. But in order to find the higher level gear, all you have to do is advance your account level. As you advance your account level and you go through the scenario and stuff, you'll start getting blue stuff, right? So you'll start getting blue gear. Let me see if I can find one that actually drops blue gear. Because uh, some of these stages actually drop gear. I've gotten gear drops in these stages before. But just take my word for it that you actually start to get blue gear in scenario if you guys start to go through this story and you guys want to just stay there long enough to do so. The other way to do it is challenge and the treasure hunt, which I think is absolutely the fastest way to get blue gear. Now, you're going to want to do this as, you know, as fast as you can, basically. So since this game is kind of locked behind a level cap, as soon as you start to level up your account and you gain access to the higher difficulties, so when you can do Ghost Story 1, you get green gear. When you get into Ghost Story 2, you get blue gear. And this is where you start getting the gear that you can get to level 8. And then as you get to Ghost Story 3, then you start to move into purple gear, right, or A-grade gear, and so on and so forth as you continue to improve your account. So that's something that I want you guys to be aware of, again, before we go into the next point of the video. Now, the next thing here, guys, is probably... Another common sense thing, and maybe you guys got this one, but I apparently didn't get it. I didn't realize that basically your support characters and your primary characters are essentially one character. So what I was thinking when I went through this game is I was looking at, let's say, Miyuki, right? And I was like, all I have to do is just make Miyuki strong and we'll be okay. So I just neglected the fact that I even remotely had to pay attention to any of my supports until shouts out for people that come and watch the stream until they pointed out to me that you can actually show equipment and you can actually show stats. And what I realized is that when you showed equipment and showed stats that your stats between your two characters are collective. So ultimately if you want your main character that's in the front line to deal a crap ton of damage or be able to take a ton of damage you have to look at both your main character and your support so if you're making the mistake that i did and you're neglecting your supports stats and their gear all of that ties into your main character so consider your main character or the amount of power that your character has or your power level to get that power level over 9000 you need to maximize the stats of both characters in one particular pair. 
And that's another super duper big mistake that, that if I can go back in time, I would literally just pick an S grade hero, right? Get my S grade hero or roll for S grade hero, whatever I would do, get me a strong support. Let's say if they're doing, still doing the pre-registration rewards and I would literally go all in on that team. Okay. All in on that team after obviously doing research and making sure that team is good. And I would just maximize those two heroes and, and really strengthen myself one pair at a time in order to maximize the efficiency. Because until I realized that I had to literally invest in the sub as well or as much as the main, I was doing like no damage. Like I was just getting embarrassed. There were people hitting me for like 4K and I didn't understand why. I was the same level as them and I was hitting for like a tenth of the damage. But then as soon as I started working on my support, oh, lo and behold, all of my damage went through the numbers. My HP value started to go up. I'm like, why am I the only kid on the block with two or 3,000 HP? at level you know 25 and everybody else has like 5k 6k 10k why do these enemies have 10k hp and i only have 2k and then once i realized like i said that i wasn't investing in my support heroes then um everything started to change so when you guys are going through this and you guys are gearing your main heroes please 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 do not neglect your supports because your supports are equally as important if not more important than the main character that is standing holding the slot this last step that i'm going to mention is the most important thing i feel in progression period period important to the point that i can make an entire video about this dedicated to itself just so you guys could really just sink all of this in because I feel that knowing what I know now as I continue to go through the game is, again, the most important part of new player progression, period, or just overall game progression. And this is where a, a lot of your power, majority of your power from your character is going to come from in conjunction with the other two things that I'm going to talk about. Are you guys ready to hear this? Because I'm ready to tell you. Because <laughs> this is something that I didn't even, I uh, swear to you, was not aware of at all. I talked about it in videos slightly, but I didn't understand how important it was until I started to roll my talents. Okay, so you guys, well, you guys are probably asking me about talents. If you guys look at your character cards, you guys have a talent score. And I want to get into this here. Um, I want to talk briefly about how talents affect your characters. And I want to talk about why they're so important in terms of structuring your character and your teams the way that you want for both your subs and your mains. Because you, your, your sub characters will also have talents as well as your mains. And you'll use these in conjunction to create the stat pool that you want. So if you need more crit, if you need more crit damage, if you need more attack power, if you need exclusive skills, you know, whatever it is, um, this is where all the meat and potatoes of building your character is going to end up. So with that being said, talents are going to be the big thing. Now, in terms of grade, a lot, I get a lot of questions all the time, like, yo, D, what's the difference in grades? What's the difference between a C grade, A grade, S grade, you know, et cetera. The difference in grade is this, and it has everything to do with your talents. Now, talents go from C grade. Okay, all the way up to S grade. You guys can see this by the color of the talent. So like these blue ones are obviously B grade. This purple one is an A grade. And there's also S grade talents or orange talents that you guys will run into as well. So just like the talents have grades, your heroes have grades. So with the heroes, heroes go from C to S as well. And determining on the grade of the hero, whether they're C, B, you know, A or S will determine how many starting talents they have. So if you're rocking, if you're rocking with a C grade hero, you will start with one talent and that's it. But worry not, any C grade hero can become a B grade hero, a B grade hero can become a A grade hero, A grade hero can become an S grade hero. Granted, it's a little bit of RNG in, in there, but basically what it boils down to is how high is your talent score. The higher you get your talent score, the faster your characters grade up. So if you're having trouble pulling those S grade heroes, you can just basically breed an S grade hero from whatever grade. Now, granted, it's going to take more time. It's a lot more investment to do. So, yeah, it's a hell of a lot easier to just pull an S grade hero and go with it. But if you guys are have been investing in that A grade hero that you've been working on, understand that if you invest enough in that hero, it will eventually turn into an S hero. OK, so the big thing here with talents is this. In the beginning, roll your talents. If you get shards, you guys are probably asking, hey, D, what do I do with my dupes? So what you do with your dupes is this. When, you, when you're opening up the character screen and you're looking at your characters, any dupes that you have, there's a little icon up here. It looks like a person turning into pieces. You're going to click that. Anything you need to decompose, like let's say you got a bunch of dupes of this, you're going to dismantle them. Okay. And what will happen is they will turn into shards. Now, 
with those shards, what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to start to roll talents, all right? So rolling talents is going to be probably the most important part of your character progression, period. So right now I don't have any shards, and these are extra shards that you guys can get. They don't necessarily have to be dismantled characters. If you guys are wondering what to do with the shards that you guys have been getting from the tower or the pinnacle or anywhere else in the game for quest rewards, this is where you use them. So what will happen is you will hit the shuffle key. I don't have any fragments, so it says no fragments to shuffle. And when you guys start out, you guys probably got like a 5-point talent or a 10-point talent or whatever. Uh, you guys are going to roll for value first instead of stats. Now, what I mean by that is when you see that 5-point card with your talent, you're going to roll until you get a 10-point card, whatever the card is. And then once you get a 10 or a 15 or a 20, whatever your luck is carrying you with, then you're just going to go ahead and just flat out replace that card. The reason I say that is because once you start with 20 point cards or 15 point cards or whatever, then every card that you roll after that within that that row will then only be that score or above. And this is how you can kind of milk it and get higher level talents really early on, depending on how many shards that you have. Now, again, these talents range from, you know, C grade, which are green, all the way up to S grade, which are orange, and they range from a variety of things. So they could increase your attack percent, like this one here, Valor at 40 increases by 25%, you know, my attack. Or Ardor at 45 increases my base attack by 171. So, you because you can only have one type of skill, right? So I can have Valor, I can have a percentage and a flat, plus whatever else, right? So I'm running crit here for this one. So as you guys continue to roll these talents, your value will continue to get higher. Once you get to a point where you feel like you you maybe are running out of shards or you're getting close, that's when you're going to start to get, you really start to look for the stats that you want. And then at that point, then choose the stat. And anytime that you want to raise the level, then again, you're just going to roll to try to get higher value. And then you're going to roll to try to get the stat that you want. But this is where the meat and potatoes is going to come from for all of your characters, all of your supports, all of your primaries. The talents is where the money is at. The faster you can roll these talents, the faster you'll get stronger, the easier the game will be in terms of early progression and getting your teams together. Now, also, I want you to keep it in mind. Now, outside of supports, because the supports don't have an exclusive talent like main characters do. Because, like, if you have a character that's a main and you guys look at their talents, all every single character in the game has an exclusive talent. So, like, Kirito has Beater, and this is an RNG one that you definitely, definitely, definitely want to try to get. Um, but if you get, decide to not go with your character's particular talent, that's okay, too. It's no big deal. But I want you guys to be aware of this because this is part of the player progression. So, like I said before, if I can go back in time and do all of this over again, I would literally just pick two characters. Like, <laughs> you know, let's say if I went with, like, Miko and a good pair and I just would focus on them I'd, I'd talent them up I'd grade them up I'd try to get their talents as high as I could get them the best gear that I could at the time and then really just ramp up my progression in the very beginning and and when you guys start to invest in your talents if you guys have been ignoring this or you guys have just been hoarding your duplicates um, make sure of course that you guys keep your s grade duplicates because you guys will need those for awakening but other than s grade dupes any like a grade dupes b grade dupes all that stuff please you guys can get rid of that Okay, and with those shards, this is where you're going to invest them in order to see the strength and the damage numbers and or HP values or whatever it is that you guys are looking for. So if you guys are looking to build that Savaria tanky, go ahead and get a bunch of HP defense and special defense values, right? If you want a Savaria or you want a Kirito or whoever to deal damage, then you guys are looking for attack power, uh, flat attack and crit and crit damage, right? But there's a lot of different ways and keep in mind again, between two characters on the same team, uh, because like I said, your supports are very, very important between the two things. When you combine all of the stats and let's say you have two characters now that have a talent score of, you know, 150, 160, 200 together. This is how you make your unit strong. This is how you make them crit for 10K, 20K. You know, this is where you create the big numbers and you make all of the magic happen. And I wanted to save this one for the third mistake that I wish I would have <laughs> knew so I didn't make when I started this game because this is so detrimentally important to your success in this game. So anyway, guys, um, these are the three things that I wanted to talk about. So just quick, just a quick rundown. Again, my, rook, uh, my rookie mistakes here <laughs> is, again, I didn't plus my gear. Okay, so I didn't max my gear because I thought I was going to get better gear. I didn't plus my supports. I literally neglected my supports because I thought that my main character was the only thing that I needed to invest in, which I was totally and utterly wrong, missing half the power. OK, 
okay? And then the last but not least and most important thing, and this pretty much ties all of these together, is investing in your talents. Talents is the bulk of your progression, and this is where I really recommend that you focus a lot of your attention um, early on so you guys can get that swift um, you know, speed up in progression so you guys can start moving forward and getting through those difficult tasks in the game. So with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns at all, definitely let me know in the comment box below. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.